Good morning or afternoon, Rayfield family. Here are your weather forecasts for this week. Monday, scattered showers and thunderstorms, high 84. Southwest winds shifting to north northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Chance of rain, 60%. Tuesday, sunny, high 84. Winds east. Northeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Wednesday, a mainly sunny sky. High 82. Winds east southeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Thursday, sunshine along with some cloudy intervals. High 86. Winds south southwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Friday, got a cloud with the possibility of an Isolated thunderstorm developing during the afternoon. High 84. Winds southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Chance of rain 30%. Saturday. Partly cloudy. High 86. Winds south southwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Sunday. Sun and cloud with a light of thunderstorm during the afternoon. High 86. Winds south southwest at miles per hour and spring Monday partly to mostly cloudy with a slight chance of showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon. I eighty two in south at ten to fifteen miles per hour and rain thirty percent. These are your forecasts for keep your umbrella handy because some days will will have some rain in forecast. Make sure to get yourself updated with the latest weather forecast as it will change time to time by watching your television or listening to your radio or from any devices that carry their weather. Thank you for tuning in and have a productive See you later. Good morning. In the coming week or a month and a half or so, depending how everything is. Uh, good morning or race to that. In the coming week, a month from now, we will have a report on hurricanes. You heard me right. Hurricane. It's that time of year. It runs from first through November. Give or take a early before June first, and give or take some time after the But those times they usually have. So, that in mind, I did receive information from the first week that we information as far as this year prediction as far as the concern. And it's specifically above the There's a second eight, possibly a third one that's going to release their information. Soon. And as soon as do, I will have available to you, the viewer, to see what's going on. And I'm going to make the history of some of the major that came in the now, I'm not going to get any of up, but I will give you a timeline as far as which one it was, as far as by name, what year, what category. And these are the categories. I'm going to have that information there also so you can understand that. So, in the coming.
coming week, about a month and a half from now, I'm going to have that quick week waiting for other information that's supposed to be available. All right. Until then, see you later. to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, say, can you see? What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the rest. so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag Still there, oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Good morning. Please pray along with me as we go to the Lord in prayer, going to Psalms 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastures. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Amen.
this morning, you feel? I gotta move on. Been so good. Is that anybody else's testimony about beside myself? Tell you been so. I see you, Betty Jackson. Been so good. Good to see you, girl. You've been so good. You've been. I have a right to vote. I have a right to vote. I have a right to see a doctor. I have a right to go to church. I have a right to humane discipline. I have a right to community outings. I have a right to talk. I have a right to education. I have a right to refuse treatment. I have a right to privacy and dignity. I have a right to make money. I have a right to exercise. I have a right to. I'm sorry. I have, I have a right to see my records. records. I have a right to own possessions. I have a right to receive services. I have a right to no discrimination. I have a right to no physical harm. The resurrection of Jesus took everybody by surprise. The disciples weren't expecting it. They knew perfectly well if you followed somebody who you thought was the Messiah and he got killed, then that was it. We know of at least a dozen other messianic or prophetic movements within the hundred years either side of Jesus. They routinely ended with the death of the founder. Um, and if, they, if the movement wanted to continue, they didn't say, oh, he's been raised from the dead. They said, let's find his brother or his cousin or somebody who can carry on this movement. We can see how those Jewish groups did that. This one did it differently. They had James, the brother of Jesus, as this great leader in the early church. Nobody said James was the Messiah. They said Jesus was the Messiah. Why? He's dead. He, they, they got him. Didn't you realize they crucified him? No, he was raised from the dead. The only way you can explain why Christianity began and why it took the very precise shape it was is, let's say it cautiously first, they really did believe he was bodily raised from the dead. And then if you take the second question and say, why would they believe that? You can go through all the theories that they found themselves forgiven, that they had a fresh sense of the presence of God, that this was cognitive dissonance, etc. And you bring all those theories to the actual facts that we know on the ground from the first century. They just don't fit. The only way you can explain the rise of the early Christian belief that Jesus was raised is that there really was an empty tomb, they really did meet Jesus alive again in a transformed body, and the thing makes sense. Of course, when I wrote a big book on this, my philosophy tutor from Oxford, who was an atheist, um, uh, read it, and he said, great book, you really make the argument, he said, I simply choose to believe that there must be some other explanation even though I don't know what it was. I said, fine, that's as far as I can take you. I can't bully you into saying, therefore, you must believe, because to do that requires a change of worldview. But once you change the worldview and say, maybe there really is a creator God, and maybe this creator God really is sorting out this sad old world at last, then everything else makes sense in a way that it doesn't with any other possibility.
Good morning, good morning, good morning. I won't let nothing turn me around. Well, I want to let that one keep going this morning. That's one of my favorites right there. How many of you this morning are saying you won't let, let nothing turn you around? Uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. God has smiled upon us. He has blessed us to see another beautiful day. And we give him the glory, the honor, and the praise. It is Wednesday, February, February. It is Wednesday, March 3rd, 2021. And it's time for a conversation with God. I tell you, I keep thinking about that song. It, it seemed like it didn't even want to end. I know I didn't want to end it, uh, but it's a great way to start the day uh, with a little bit of encouragement, lifting up uh, the Lord and just encouraging one another, knowing that with God on our side, you know, we have to be determined to not let anything turn us around. No matter what troubles you're facing, no matter what the obstacle may be, don't let nothing, nothing turn you around. I hope, trust, and pray that all, all is well with each one of you. Good morning to all of our prayer warriors who are join, joining us as usual. I know that you all are already on it on a daily basis, having your conversation with God, not only just at this time, but throughout the day, talking with the Lord about the things that you need, not only for yourself, but even for his mercy in the lives of others. And that's what a conversation with God is all about. His children, the children of God coming before our father, uh, just to talk to him and allow him to speak to us through his word. God desires a close uh, fatherly relationship with each and every one of us. And through Jesus Christ, and thanks be to God, we have that opportunity uh, to be a children of God. And again, we just thank God for blessing us to be able to make it to Wednesday, Wednesday, the middle of the week. And that's why I played that song, I Won't Let Nothing Turn Me Around. We, he's brought us this far, he's brought us this far, too far uh, to leave us. So we must be determined not to allow anything to turn us around. As always, I encourage you to leave your prayer requests in the comment section, as some of you uh, have already started doing. We definitely appreciate that so we can remember you in our prayers. If you have prayer requests for yourself or for someone else, please, please feel free to leave that in the comment section so uh, the prayer warriors can remember you uh, in our uh, prayers. For our morning devotion, for our devotion today, we're going to John chapter 9, and we're going to read verses 1 through 3. John chapter 9, verses 1, 2, and 3. I encourage and invite you to you know, write that in the comment section uh, so that you can get it in your head and help someone else to follow along as well. John chapter 9, verses 1, two and three. The Bible reads, and as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him saying, master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither has this man sinned nor his parents but that the works of God should be manifest in him. Jesus answered, neither has this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Brothers and sisters, family and friends, I want to uh, speak to you from the subject, my pain has a purpose. My pain has a purpose. Say that to yourself. My pain has a purpose. Write it in the comment section. My pain has a purpose. How many of you have ever found yourself asking the question, why me? You know, uh, suffering is a part of life. Uh, we see it all around us. And when it's really, you know, when the suffering and the troubles of life are really pouring in, you know, as we often say, when it rains, it pours. Sometimes we, we ask that question, we wonder why, why is this going on in my life? You know, why 
Am I struggling with my health? Why uh, did we just have this accident, you know, with the family car and now we don't have a car anymore? Why is my child going through this? Why is my, uh, why am I facing this situation? Why, Lord? I believe uh, God wants us to understand, even though you and I may not understand the suffering and the, and the afflictions and the troubles um, that we are going through, we may not understand or know the cause of it. We not, may not know the reason for it, but one thing I want you to know, there is a purpose for it. And it's so important for us to, to, to realize that. Stop focusing on trying to find the reason uh, for it and look for the purpose in it. Not the reason for it, but the purpose in it. What is the purpose uh, of my pain? What is it that God wants to be revealed uh, in this situation that I am facing right now? In this story that many of us are so familiar with, the Bible is very clear. Um, Jesus came along and saw this blind man who had been blind from, from birth. And the disciples looking at the situation, looking at the man, he asked Jesus a question, Lord, who did sin? There are a lot of folks who are just like these disciples that think that suffering, you know, that all suffering is the result of a person's sin. Somebody had to do wrong in order for this to happen. While suffering is the cause, well, while sin is the cause of our suffering in a general sense, every person's situation and struggle and suffering is not the, the direct result of their sin or someone else's sin. And so we need, when we see people going through, and even when you're going through uh, suffering and troubles in life, it's not that God is trying to punish you for some wrong that you're doing. It's not always because you've done something wrong. You need to know that there is a, a purpose behind that. And Jesus talked about that. It's not always because somebody has sinned, somebody has done something wrong. We even look at that and, and learn from Job's situation. Job was an upright man. He feared God. Uh, he, he, he avoided evil but he went through a whole lot of suffering. And it, it was because of the providence of God. And that's one, one thing we learned from this, this text here in John chapter nine, because Jesus said, stop looking at, you know, while the disciples trying to look at the cause, Jesus looked at the purpose or the opportunity that this man's condition uh, made available. Jesus answered verse number three, Neither has this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I want you to pay attention to that. This man is in this condition, this situation. This uh, He's in this suffering. He's going through this right now so that the works of God should be made manifest in him. In other words, he's in this condition. He's facing this struggle right now so that God, the power of God, the providence of God, the mercy of God, the compassion of God could be put on display in his life for the whole world to see. Some of y'all don't realize that God has allowed you to be in this situation because he wants to show just how powerful he is, just how compassionate he is, just how merciful he is. And everybody else, you know, people may not understand it, but you need to know that there is purpose in your pain. Your pain has a purpose. God is going to be glorified in it. God is going to be glorified through it. And God is going to be glorified because of it. Watch God work, y'all. And I think it's so important for us to, to understand in this situation, Jesus had the opportunity to, uh, to show why he is the light of the world, why he is God in the flesh, why he has He has the power and the authority. Because if you look at verse number uh, five, he says, as long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. Sometimes God allows us to, to be in situations so he can prove and show who he is. 
how he is compassionate, how he's merciful, how he's kind, how he's gracious, how he takes care of those who trust in them. And when we find ourselves in those situations, stop looking for the cause and look for the purpose. God, how is it that I can allow myself to glorify you or allow this situation, allow you to be glorified in this situation, in this uh, condition that I am in? How can I allow you, what can I do to allow you to be glorified in this moment? And sometimes you'd be amazed at how God is glorified because God is able to take any situation and turn it around for his glory. Does not the word say in Romans chapter eight, verse number 28, that all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. God is able to even turn our suffering into something good, something for that he is glorified in and through and, and because all things work together, all things, all things, all things, no matter what it is, he's gonna work it out for your good because you love him and he has called you according to his purpose. That's how awesome God is. You may not understand it, but you need to under, you may not understand the reason why, but you need to know the purpose that God wants to be glorified in that situation, in your situation, through this situation that you're facing right now. Turn over to 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 10. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10. You need to understand that God wants to be glorified. God wants to be put on display in your situation that you're facing right now. Stop looking for the reason why and just look for the purpose. And there is a purpose. Your pain has a purpose. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse number 10. Look at this. Look at how God, how awesome God is. But the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while. In other words, you're going to go through some suffering. You're going to go through some things you may not be able to understand and, and why you're going through this. And don't, don't worry about why you're going through it. But just know that, and, and I need you to understand that whatever we go through is by the will of God. Nothing happens in our lives without God's permission. So that's one thing you can tell yourself, that when you're facing a situation, acknowledge and accept the fact this is God's will for me to be in this situation. No matter, I may not know the cause, but I know it is God's will. And the reason and the, his will is that he will be glorified in this moment, in this situation, or through this situation. But look at the promise that's associated with this. After you have suffered a while, God will make you perfect. He's going to mature you. He's going to develop you. He's going to groom. He's going to establish you. He's going to strengthen you. He's going to settle you. Not only do you get to see the providence of God displayed through your pain, but you get to see the promise of God displayed in your pain. Did you not know that there's a promise of God attached to your pain? There's a promise of God that is attached to your pain. Let's read that again. After you have suffered it for a while, that's the condition. Here's the promise. God will make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. In other words, you're going to come out of this better than you when you went in. God is developing you. He's grooming you. He's, he's strengthening you. He's building your character as a result of the suffering and the trials and tribulation that you're going through. He's using this for his glory so he can be glorified in you and through you. And because of you, God is doing something. He's doing something through this. There's a purpose for it. And you just got to trust him. You have got to trust him. You have to get, you have got to turn around or change the way that you look at your situation. Stop looking for the reason why. Stop talking about, oh, whoa, always me. God has, has chosen you and chosen the situation as a means by which he can be glorified. 
that God can be uh, put on display based on what you're going through. One of the best examples of this, uh, I believe, is in uh, Genesis chapter 50 and verse number 20. In Genesis chapter uh, 50 and verse number 20, we see a man who truly understood uh, the purpose you know, of his pain. He truly understood that his pain had a, a purpose. And sometimes we only understand it after we have gone through it. Then we look back and so, you know, as they say, hindsight is 2020. Some of us know that now. Some of you already know. If it was not for the thing that you've been through in life, you wouldn't have the wisdom that you have. You wouldn't have the faith that you have. You wouldn't have the courage that you had. You wouldn't have the, uh, the determination that you have if it was not for what you went through, for what the Lord brought you through. And so now you look back and you see. In Genesis chapter 50, in verse number 20, Joseph, we know him. We know him. We've just been studying him about him in, in Bible study. Joseph was a man who was sold uh, into slavery by his own brothers. He was mistreated. He was abused. And then he was accused of rape. He was thrown in jail. But God was faithful to him because he was faithful to God. And so at the end of the story, the Bible, all things come full circle. And Joseph's brothers were standing before him. And Joseph had now been elevated. Look at God. Even in the midst of the suffering, uh, Joseph was elevated, elevated to the point where he was in a position to help others who were in need. But nevertheless, his brothers came, you know, God turned this thing around here. The same brothers that sold him into slavery were standing before him, depending on his mercy right now. And his brothers were afraid of Joseph, like, man, this brother, he's going to kill us because of what we did to him. But Joseph had the spirit of God. Joseph had learned some things. He didn't harbor any bitterness, but look at how he looked at his situation. In Genesis chapter 50, and verse number 20. But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. In other words, I had to go through that in order to be where I am today to help you. There was a purpose for my pain, a purpose for my suffering. I'm, I didn't know it then, but I know it now. What you meant for evil, God used for good. Some of y'all don't realize that right now that what you're going through, God is using this and he's going to be glorified in this. You just got to hold on. You got to trust God, remain obedient to the Lord. Because there's its purpose to your pain. Your pain has a purpose. Trust God, y'all. Trust him. He's going to work it out. It's going to be all right. He's going to bring you through it. And while you're going through it, he's going to give you what you need. He's going to give you what you need in order to endure. My grace is sufficient. I got you. I got you. You're going to get through it. You're going to be all right. And God is going to be glorified in it, through it, and because of it. Trust him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you once again, as always, with thanksgiving in our hearts. Thanking you for another day that you bless us to be able to see. As always, Father, when we close out one day, there's no guarantee that we're going to live to see another day. But Father, because of your mercy and your grace, you watched over us last night. You protected us from all harm, hurt, and danger. And you allowed us to, to continue to breathe and to open our eyes to experience this day we've never seen before and we will never see again. Father, thank you for your mercy and your grace. I'm so grateful this morning, Father, because I know there are many people who took their last breath last night. There are some people who woke up this morning but did not live to see this moment right now. But Father, you've been gracious towards us, and we thank you for that. We thank you for the mercy you've shown towards us in forgiving us of our sins. And Father, we thank you for your forgiveness. We, we ask that you will continue to have mercy upon us and help us to be 
merciful to others, Father, and be forgiving of them as you are of us. Thank you. And thank you for your word. It's a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Thank you for your word today that helps us to understand that our pain has a purpose. And Father, there you allow us to be in situations and you allow us to even face suffering and, 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 and placing in us and by your providence and your will, allowing us to be in those situations so that you might be glorified and exalted uh, in it, through it, and because of it, Father. Help us, Father, to change our focus from asking why me to, to asking, Lord, how can I allow you to be glorified in this, what I'm going through right now? Help us to shift our focus, Father, and be as Joseph was, who recognized that what one uh, needs me for evil that you use for good. Help us, Father, to, to change how we see our struggles, our suffering, our trials, and our tribulation. Help us understand that you bring us to those situations and those, those moments in our lives so that the works of God can be manifest in us. Thank you, Father. Thank you. We even thank you for uh, the, the suffering and the affliction, the thing that we have to endure, Father. But it's during those times we understand and we learn just how compassionate you are, just how merciful you are, just how powerful you are, just how... Uh, faithful you are to those who trust in you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. And Father, as we go through this day, we ask that you will lead the way, Father. Guide us, Father. Guide our footsteps. Guide our, our hearts and our minds, Father, that we will be focused on you and accomplishing, accomplishing your will on this earth. Father, we pray that you will give us the strength, the wisdom, and the courage to fulfill our purpose on this day that you've allowed us to see. Help us, Father, to be the light of the world and the salt of the earth, to be able to uh, be a vessel uh, for your glory, that you might be able to work in us and through us to accomplish your will on this earth, to let the world know that there is a God and he is alive. Father, we pray uh, for those who are sick. We ask that you look into the comment section and see the names of uh, the individuals, Father, who we're asking for your mercy upon. We're asking that you be gracious upon those who are sick right now. You know who they are, Father, our friends, family, co-workers, even people we may not know. We're asking, Father, in Jesus' name, that you will be merciful, that you will be gracious towards them, Father, and heal their bodies, restore them back to the normality of health and strength as only you can. And Father, those who are uh, undergoing procedures today, who are visiting the doctors, and we're asking, Father, that you will be with them in the hospital rooms and the uh, operating rooms, and that all will go well, Father, and that you will guide the hands of the doctors and the nurses that are attending to these individuals, and that you will re uh, renew them, Father, that you will heal them, restore them, Father, as only you can. Father, for those whose hearts are heavy this morning, we, we pray that you will continue to show them the comfort that only you can. Father, settle their hearts, settle their minds, give them that peace that passes all understanding, helping them to understand that this too uh, shall pass. And Father, we pray for those, Father, who may not know which way to turn, maybe they're feeling discouraged this morning, frustrated, whatever the case may be. Father, we ask in Jesus' name that you will reveal your glory in their lives right now. For those who need wisdom and guidance, we ask that you will provide it for them. Show them which way you would have them to go. For those, Father, who need financial blessings and, and uh, health and, and whatever it may be, Father, we pray that you would just provide for them the things they stand in need of. Bless our families, bless our jobs. Bless our businesses and things that we undertake to do for your glory and for your honor. And we thank you so much for Jesus because we recognize he's the one that made all this possible. Because of him, we have forgiveness of sin and we have the promise of eternal life. It's in Jesus' name that we ask this prayer and we give thanks. Amen. My pain has a purpose. Don't forget that. God is going to be glorified in it, through it, and because of it, all you have to do is trust him and obey. Keep walking by faith and not by sight. 
God's going to take care of you just as he said he would. You all have a wonderful Wednesday. And don't forget to join us if you can. You can join us tonight uh, for our monthly prayer service at 7.30 p.m. And then in the morning at 7.30 a.m., uh, we'll have another conversation with God. You all have a great day.
Good morning or afternoon, Rayfield family. Here are your weather forecasts for this week. Monday, scattered showers and thunderstorms. High 84. Southwest winds shifting to north northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Chance of rain 60%. Tuesday, sunny. High 84. Winds east. Northeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Wednesday, a mainly sunny sky. High 82. Winds east southeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Thursday, sunshine along with some cloudy intervals. High 86. Winds south southwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Friday, scattered clouds with the possibility of an Isolated thunderstorm developing during the afternoon. High 84. Winds southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Chance of rain 30%. Saturday. Partly cloudy. High 86. Winds south southwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Sunday. Sun and clouds with a light of thunderstorm during the afternoon. High 86. Winds south southwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour and spring 36. Monday, partly to mostly cloudy with a slight chance of showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon. I 82. Winds south at 10 to 15 miles per hour and spring 36. These are your weather forecasts for keep your umbrella handy because some days will. We'll have some rain in the forecast. Make sure to keep yourself updated with the latest weather forecast as it will change time to time by watching your television or listening to your radio or from any devices that carry their weather. Thank you for tuning in and have a productive. See you later. Good morning. In the coming week or a month and a half or so, depending how everything uh, Good morning or race to that. In the coming week, a month from now, we will have on hurricane. You heard me right. Hurricane. It's that time of year. It runs from first through November. Give or take a early before you work and give or take some time after November. But those times they usually have set for. So, with that in mind, I did receive information from the first week that we information as far as this year prediction as far as the concerned. And it's specifically above there's a Second eight, possibly a third one that's going to release their information soon. And as soon as do, I will have available to you, the viewers, to see what's going on. And I'm going to make a history of some of the major hurdles that came in the United States. Now, I'm not going to get any of those up, but I will give you a timeline as far as which one it was as far as by name, what year, what category. And these are the categories. I'm going to have that information available also so you can understand that. So, in the 
coming week, about a month and a half from now, I'm going to have that quick waiting for other information that's supposed to be available. All right. Until then, see you later. to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, say, can you see? So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the rest. So gallantly streaming, and the rocket red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag. Still there, oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the Nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Good morning. Please pray along with me as we go to the Lord in prayer, going to Psalms 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastures. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Amen.
feeling so good this morning, you feel? I gotta move on. Feeling so good. Is that anybody else's testimony about beside myself? Tell them you've been so. I see you, Betty Jackson. Been so good. Good to see you, girl. You've been so good. You've been. I have a right to vote. I have a right to vote. vote. I have a right to see a doctor. I have a right to go to church. I have a right to humane discipline. I have a right to community outings. I have a right to talk. I have a right to education. I have a right to refuse treatment. I have a right to privacy and dignity. I have a right to make money. I have a right to exercise. I have a right to. I'm sorry. I have a right to see my records. I have a right to own possessions. I have a right to receive services. I have a right to no discrimination. I have a right to no physical harm. The resurrection of Jesus took everybody by surprise. The disciples weren't expecting it. They knew perfectly well if you followed somebody who you thought was the Messiah and he got killed, then that was it. We know of at least a dozen other messianic or prophetic movements within the hundred years either side of Jesus. They routinely ended with the death of the founder. Um, and if, they, if the movement wanted to continue, they didn't say, oh, he's been raised from the dead. They said, let's find his brother or his cousin or somebody who can carry on this movement. We can see how those Jewish groups did that. This one did it differently. They had James, the brother of Jesus, as this great leader in the early church. Nobody said James was the Messiah. They said Jesus was the Messiah. Why? He's dead. He, they, they got him. Didn't you realize they crucified him? No, he was raised from the dead. The only way you can explain why Christianity began and why it took the very precise shape it was is, let's say it cautiously, first, they really did believe he was bodily raised from the dead. And then if you take the second question and say, why would they believe that? You can go through all the theories that they found themselves forgiven, that they had a fresh sense of the presence of God, that this was cognitive dissonance, etc. And you bring all those theories to the actual facts that we know on the ground from the first century. They just don't fit. The only way you can explain the rise of the early Christian belief that Jesus was raised is that there really was an empty tomb, they really did meet Jesus alive again in a transformed body, and the thing makes sense. Of course, when I wrote a big book on this, my philosophy tutor from Oxford, who was an atheist, um, uh, read it, and he said, great book, you really make the argument, he said, I simply choose to believe that there must be some other explanation even though I don't know what it was. I said, fine, that's as far as I can take you. I can't bully you into saying, therefore you must believe, because to do that requires a change of worldview. But once you change the worldview and say maybe there really is a creator God, and maybe this creator God really is sorting out this sad old world at last, then everything else makes sense in a way that it doesn't with any other possibility.
Good afternoon. Hello, 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 hello. It is Wednesday again. It is story time with Miss Amanda. We are going to continue reading the story Charlotte's Web. Charlotte's Web have been a long story, but it have been a good story. It letting you know how all the animals at the Zucamus farm get along. How they com communicate with each other. How they work together to make things come together. Sit back, guys, because I am going to read to you the rest of the story. Not the ending of the story. Don't get it confused. But we are going to continue from chapter 17. That is the chapter that will be read today. And the name of that chapter is going to be Uncle. Last week's story ended when Wilbur Big Day finally arrived. Everyone headed out for that county fair, and everyone was so excited. Charlotte had decided that she will be attending the fair with Wilbur. Remember, she told Wilbur last week that she don't think that she will be going. But anyway... Charlotte changed her mind. She decided to go to the fair with Wilbur. And not only did she decide to go to the fair with Wilbur, she talked Tempton, the rat, into going alone also. Both Charlotte and Tempton, they became stowaways inside of Wilbur's cage. Do anyone know what a stowaway is? Well, let me tell you. A stowaway is when you hide and can't be seen by others. Charlotte and Tempton, they hid themselves inside of Wilbert's cage. No one could see them. So off to the fair they went. This week, we will be reading chapter 17, Uncle. Not Uncle Zucamana. This is a whole new uncle. So I want you guys to pay attention because I, Miss Amanda, is going to ask you, who is uncle? And I am going to want you to describe uncle to me and to the rest of the class. Describe uncle. Let us know what uncle looked like and who was this uncle. So let's begin, guys. Again, I say, it's story time with Miss Amanda. Chapter 17. We will begin in chapter 17. And the title of chapter 17 is Uncle. Remember, I just spoke of Uncle. Pay attention. I want you to describe Uncle to me. And I want you to tell me who is this Uncle. When they pulled inside the fairground, they could hear music. And they can see fairy wheels turning in the sky. They could smell the dust of the racetrack where the sparkling cots had marched it. And they could smell the hamburgers frying. And they can see balloons aloof. They could hear sheep in their pens. And they could hear voices over the live speaker. They heard a voice that said, Attention, please. Will the owner of a Pontiac car, license number H2439, would you please remove your car away from the fireworks shed? Then you, I heard Fern say, Can I have some money? And Ava said, me too. I am going to win a dog, Fern said, by spinning a wheel 
and it will stop at the right number. I am going to steal a jet plane, said Ava, and I'm going to make it bump into other planes. Can I have a balloon, as fun? Can I have frozen custard and a cheeseburger and some raspberry soft drinks, Ava asked? You children, please be quiet until we can get the pig unloaded, said Miss Arbor. Let the children go off by themselves, said Mr. Arbor. Let them run around the fairground. Let them have fun today. Let them go. But before they was discharged and was able to leave and go alone, there was um, instructions given to them. They was told to not spend all their money quickly. And to hold on to their money throughout the day. They was told that to be back at the truck a certain time. Around noon time. So they can have lunch together. And they was told not to eat a lot of junk. Nothing that is going to make their stomachs upset. And to hold on to the swains very tight if they was going to swing. They was given all kind of instructions by their parents. They was off to that fair. They was off to the fairground to run around and to have a lot of fun. They was instructed also do not get lost. Do not wander away from each other, but try to stick together and enjoy the day. And don't get dirty. Don't get dirty, I think, was going to be a very hard thing not to do at a county fair. But they was told by their parents many instructions that they must follow. Don't get overheated either, said their mother. Yes. They was given their money and off they ran to that fairground. The children grabbed each other by the hand and they danced off in the direction of the merry-go-round toward the wonderful music and the wonderful adventure and the wonderful excitement into the wonderful midway where there will be no parents to guard them and guide them and where they could be happy and free and they can do as they please. Mr. Arbel, he stood quietly. He stood quietly watching the children as they ran across the fairground. While Wibble was being unloaded and taken out of his crate and into his new pig pen, Crowds of people gathered round to watch. They stared at that big sound sign that said Zucamus famous P. Willis stared back and tried to look extra good. He tried to look radiant because that's who he was. He was a radiant pig. He was pleased with his new home. The pig the pen was very grassy, and it was shaded from the sun by the shed roof. Charlotte, watching her chance, scrambled out of the cage and clammed a post to the underside of the roof. Nobody noticed her as she went about. Tempton not wishing to come out in broad daylight, spray quietly under the scroll. He didn't want to come out and he didn't want to be seen yet. So he stayed up underneath the scroll in the pig pen. Mr. Zucamo poured some skin milk into Wilbur food, pitching clean scroll into his pen. Then he and Miss Zucama and the Arbles walked away from the cattle barn to look 
at pass and to see the sights. Mr. Zukuma wanted to look at Tritus. Miss Zukuma, she wanted to see a deep freeze. The bye, he just wandered off by himself, hoping to meet friends and have some fun in the midday. As soon as the people was gone, Charlotte spoke to Wilbur. It's a good thing you can't see what I see, she said. What do you see, Wilbur asked. There's a pig in the nice pen, and he is enormous. I'm afraid he much bigger than you are, Wilbur. Maybe he's older than I am and have had more time to grow, suggested Wilbur. Tears began to come to his eyes. I drop down and have a closer look, Wilbur, Charlotte said. Then she crawled along a beam till she was directly in front over the next pen. She let herself down at the drag line until she hung in the air just in front of the big pig snork. May I have your name, she asked politely. The pig stared at her. No name, he said in a big husky voice. Just call me uncle. My name is uncle. Call me uncle. Very well, uncle, replied Charlotte. What is the date of your birth? Are you a spring pig? Everyone know what a spring pig. I know you remember. A spring pig is born in the spring and they fattening him up and they fattening the pigs up so that they can be eaten, cut up in chops, ham, bacon, pork chops, all kind of meat that come from a pig. That is what a spring pig. They grow until winter time. And when winter time come, they are big and they are fat. And they are ready to be cut up in meat pieces. That is what a spring pig is. The pig uncle said, Am I a spring pig? Sure, I am a spring pig. What did you think I was, a spring chicken? <laughs> did you actually think I was a spring chicken? Ha <laughs> ha, that's a good one, sister. Mildly funny, says Charlotte. I heard funnier ones, though. Glad to have met you. And now I must be going. She ascended slowly and she returned to Wibble Pen. He claimed, he claims, she said, talking about uncle. He claims he's a spring pig, reported Charlotte. And perhaps he is. One thing is suddenly, and that is, he had the most unattractive personality. He is too familiar, too nosy, and he cried weak jokes. Also, he's not anywhere near as clean as you are, Wilbur. Not pleasant at all. I took quite a dislike to him in our brief little interview I had with him. He is going to be a hard pig to beat, though. What do you mean, Wilbur said? On account of his size and his weight, Charlotte said. He is a very huge pig. He is really, really bigger than you, Char Wilbur. I'm sorry, guys. He is really bigger than you. He is huge. Very big. 
but with helping you, it can be done. It don't matter that he's bigger than you. I still think that you can win, Charlotte said. When are you going to spin a web, asked Will. This afternoon, later, if I'm not too tired, said Charlotte. The list name ties me out these days. I don't seem to have any energy, Charlotte said. I once had energy, but now I'm beginning to have no energy. I guess it's my age. We would look at his friend. She looked it rather swollen, and she seen it listless. I'm awful sorry to hear that you are feeling poorly, Charlotte, Wilbur said. Perhaps if you spin a web and catch a couple of flies, you will feel better. Perhaps, she said wearily, but I feel like the end of a long day. Claim, clinging upside down to the ceiling, she settled down for a nap, leaving Wilbur very much worried about her. All morning, people's wonder past Wilbur Penn. Dozens and dozens of strangers stopped to stare at him and to admire how silky white cord his curly tail and his kind and radiant expression. Then they would move on to the next pen where the bigger pig lay. Wilbur heard several people make favorable remarks about Uncle's great size. He couldn't help overhearing these remarks and he couldn't help worrying. And now with Charlotte not feeling well, he thought, Oh, dear. All morning, Templeton slept quietly under the straw. The day grew hot. At noon, the Zuckermas and the Arbors returned to the pig pen. Then a minute later, Firm and Abel showed up. Firm had a monkey doll in her arm and was eating cracker jack. Ava had a balloon tied to his ear, and he was chewing a candy apple. The cheering was hot, and they was dirty. Isn't it hot, said Miss Zuckerman. It's turbulently hot, said Miss Arbor, fanning herself with an appetizement of a deep freeze. One by one, they climbed into the truck, and they opened up their lunch boxes. The sun beat down on everything. Nobody seemed it to be hungry. What are the ju- when are the judges going to decide about Willard? asked Miss Zuckerma. Not till tomorrow, said Mr. Zuckerma. Levi appeared. He was carrying an Indian blanket that he had won. That's just what we need, said Smart Mouth Abel. A blanket, hot as it is, that's just what we need, Levi. Of course it is, replied Levi. And he spread the blanket across the sideboards of the truck so that it was a little tent. The children sat in the shade under the blanket and they felt better. After lunch, they scratched out and they were so tired till they fell to sleep. In chapter 18, the cool evening. In the cool evening when Shadow Dog darkened the fairgrounds, Tempton creeped from the crate and he looked it around. Wilbur lay asleep in the scrawl. Charlotte was billing a well. Tempton, keen nose, detected many fine smells in the air. So what do you think Tempton the rat was smelling? I bet you he was smelling all of that good food that people had thrown uh, to the ground and in the garbage can at that fairground. He was making... Mm, 
Mmm, he was smelling the, the smell of that food. And it was smelling so good to tempt him. The rat was hungry and he was thirsty. He decided to go exploring. Without saying anything to anyone, he started off. Bring me back a word, shall I call out to him. I shall be writing tonight for the last time. The rat mumbled something under his breath to himself, and he disappeared into the shadow. He did not like being treated like a messenger boy. After the heat of the day, the evening came as a welcome relief to all. The fairy wheel was lighting, lit it was lighting now. It was round and round in the sky. And it seemed twice as high as by day. There were lights on the midway that you can hear the crackle of the gambling machines. You can hear the music on the go, the merry-go-round. And you can hear the voices of men in booths calling out numbers. The children felt refreshed after their nap. Fern met her friend. Henry Fussy. Do you guys remember the name Henry Fussy? Yes. Remember the doctor, Doran, and Firm Mom was talking? And the doctor asked her that Firm, who was Firm friend, and Miss Arbor said, Harry Fussy. Henry Fussy. And he invited Firm to ride on the fairy wheel with him. He even bought Firm a ticket, so it didn't cost her anything. When Miss Arbor happened to look up in that sky and saw her little daughter sitting with Harry, Henry Fussy, and going higher and higher into the air, and she saw how happy Firm looked it. She just shook her head. She said, my, 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 she said, Henry Fussy, think of that. Tempton kept out of sight in the tall grass behind the cattle barn. He found a folded piece of newspaper, and inside it was leftovers from someone's lunch. There was a ham sandwich, a piece of Swiss cheese, a half a boiled egg, and some wormy apples. The rat crawled in and ate everything. That rat was so hungry. He ate everything he could come upon on that day. Then he tore a word out of the paper and started back to Wibble's pen. Charlotte had her web almost finished when Tempton returned, carrying the newspaper clipping. She had left a space in the middle of the web so that she can weave a word in it. At this hour, no people was around in the pig pen, so the rat and the spider and the pig were all by themselves. I hope you brought a good one, Charlotte said. It is the last word that I shall ever write. Here, said Tempton, unrolling the paper. What does it say? asked Charlotte. You'll have to read it to me. It says humble, replied the rat. Humble, said Charlotte. Humble has two meanings. It means not pride, and it means near the ground. That is Wilbur all over. He's not a pride pig, and he's near the ground. Well, I hope you're satisfied, said the rat. I am not going to spend all my time looking and carrying words back and forward to you. I came to this fair to enjoy myself and not to be delivering papers. You have been very helpful, though, said Charlotte. Run alone, and if you won't, 
to see more of the fair. The rat grinned. I'm going to make a night of it, he said. The old sheep was right. This fair is a rat paradise. What's eating and what's drinking? And everywhere, good hiding and good hunting. Bye-bye, my humble Wilbert. Farewell. Charlotte, you old schemer. This will be a night to remember in a rat's life. He vanished into the shadows. Charlotte went back to her work. It was quite dark now. And in a distance, fireworks began to go off. Furrier balls were flying in the sky. And by the time Arbor and Miss Zucama, Levi and the rest returned from the grandstand, Charlotte had finished her well. She had weaved the word humble in the center. Nobody noticed it in the dark. Everybody was so tired. Firm and Abel clam into the truck and they lay down. They pulled the Indian blanket over them. Levi gave them. Wilbur, a bulk full of fresh straw. Miss Arbor patted him. Time for us to go home, he said to the pig. See you tomorrow. The grown-ups clammed slowly into the truck. And Wilbur heard the engine start. And then heard the truck moving away in slow speed. He would have been lonely and homesick had Charlotte not been with him. Remember, Charlotte was in the cage. She was a stowaway. Never felt lonelier. And when she was near, she always felt happy. In the distance, he could still hear the music on the Ferris wheel. And he was dropping off to sleep. He spoke to Charlotte. Sing me that song again about doing, done, and the dog, he begged. Not tonight, said Charlotte in a low voice. I am just too tired. Why aren't you on your web, asked Wilbur. You almost never leave that web. I left it tonight, she said. Wilbur closed his eyes, Charlotte. She closed his eyes. Charlotte, he said, after a while. Do you really think Zuckerman would let me live and not kill me when the cold weather come? Do you really think so? Of course, said Charlotte. You are a famous pig, and you are a good pig. Tomorrow you will probably win a prize. The whole world will hear about you. Zucama will be proud and happy to own such a pig. You have nothing to fear, Wilbur. Nothing to worry about. Maybe you will live forever. Who knows? And now go to sleep. Stop worrying about things like that. Go to sleep, Wilbur. What are you doing up there, Charlotte? Oh, making something, she said. Making something unusual. It is something for me, Wilbur asked. No, said Charlotte. It's something for me and for my change. Please tell me what it is, Big Wilbur. I'm telling you in the morning, she said. When the first light come into the sky and the sparrows stir and the cows rattle their chain, when the rooster crows and the stars fade, when early cars whisper along the highway, you look up here and I show you something. I will show you my masterpiece. Before she finished the sentence, Wilbur was fast asleep. She could tell by the sound of his breathing that he was sleeping very peacefully. Miles away at the Arbor House, the men were sitting around the kitchen table eating a dish of candied peaches and talking about the event of the day. Upstairs, Ava was in his bed fast asleep. 
Miss Arbor was tucking Fern into bed. Did you have a good time, she asked Fern and kissed her daughter. She nodded. I had the best time I had in this time. I had the best time I've had in my whole life is what Fern was saying. Well said, Miss Arbor. Isn't that nice? So that's telling me that you enjoyed your day at the county fair. And you can look forward for them, Fern. You have much more fun to have tomorrow. They are still, they still excited. There's still so much excitement going on at that county fair. The judges still have not made any decisions yet. So I see you guys next week with more excitement in Charlotte's Web. I don't know about you, but I am excitedly, I am excitedly waiting to see what prize, or should I say what prizes, Wibble will be winning at the county fair. I see you guys next week. Same time, Wednesday, story time with Miss Amanda. I'm looking forward to seeing you, and I'm hoping that you guys got your listen ears on, that you guys are paying attention to this story, so you will be able to tell me some things that happened in Charlotte's Well. Love you. See you next week. Have a great week. Good morning. This is Miss Joy, your teacher from Rayfield. I'm here to tell you some things about education and your right to an education. Just because you have a disability does not mean you cannot learn. Our education should be just as everyone's. You, should, you are entitled to an education as everyone. We belong to a regular class as much as possible. You should be in a regular class as much as possible. The school must change so it works for you. You should be taught in a way that you understand. You should be taught in a way that you can understand what they're telling you. The way that they're teaching you is more understandable for you. If, if you need support to make it more comfortable and understandable, you should get it. Teachers must learn how to teach us. That's why they go to school. The school board must hire a trained teacher for every person's needs. Education is what will help you to be more independent. These are our fundamental rights. The schools should not have children of special needs in a manner just for keeping them quiet. These students can learn. Individual education plan is made available for uh, children between kindergarten and the 12th grade. This plan 
is there to help the teachers guide you through your education, regardless of your disability. It just takes time to evaluate and find a way for teaching you. And education means independence, a job, and your own money to go shop and get out as you want. Graduates have a prom where they have lots of beautiful special occasions. There's a red and white ball at Rayfield, dinner and awards night. Education has its rewards for everyone. You can enter an apprenticeship, which is where someone that is competent and have a license can help teach you their trade. Vocational training is also available to you and college is also there for, there for you to have to apply for what you need and do. Education is there for everyone if you want it. Technology is very high in demands. Excuse me. Here at Rayfield School, there are very special, highly advanced students in technology and each one teach one. Education is not only learned in school by teachers, but by each other. Learning is a very unique and special transformation of ability that is in everyone. Your own way is good, but you must be continuous and persistent. As I said, education is for everyone in their own way and style. You have to want to learn and focus and find your way. The rewards are great. With that, go to school always, and at the end, you will be rewarded with a great future, jobs. There is something for everyone. Disabilities can't stop you. Students must notify their school and document their needs. Schools must provide tools and modifications to your learning needs. Help students take examples of school, oops. Okay, I'll have to read that little part over again, please. Help students take part in class. Examples, a school may offer course reading material in Braille for the visual impaired. Sign language for the hard of hearing. If you are discriminated against, you can file a complaint with the Department of Education Office of Civil Rights. You have rights, use them, ask for help, just ask. You have the right to go to college or vocational training, and you must let them know what your needs are so, so they can assist you. That is your right, and you are responsible for letting them know what you need. Good luck.